So let me ask you something. If I put something like this in front of you, what would you do with it? Could you play through an entire song with just this? Do you see harmony from this perspective? And more importantly, should you? So today I wanna to talk about jazz harmony and how to use it to play, improvise, arrange, or even write music. Harmony is the best tool that we have for songwriting and yet it's often neglected by many songwriters and musicians. The best way to learn harmony is by analyzing great songs. So in this video, let's take a look at the harmony in Misty. We'll learn how to look at the progression harmonically and study the different techniques used in this song. I promise you that by the end of this video, you'll have learned a bunch of new concepts that you can apply to your own process. So let's take a completely different approach. Instead of looking at the chord changes and analyzing the progression functionally, we're gonna start with the harmonic analysis. No chords. So here I have Misty with harmonic functions and arrows and brackets using the Berklee College of Music's method without any chord symbols. I'll show you how to study the harmony in Misty from this perspective. Trust me, it's so cool and useful you won't believe how much you can learn by using this approach. Before we go any further, just a friendly reminder to like, subscribe, and share our content with all your friends. It really helps us out and we really appreciate it. All right, so we're in the key of E flat major. As expected, the first chord is a one major seven. So E flat major seven. Here we see a four major seven chord. In E flat, that's A flat major seven. Notice how this A flat major seven is a target chord. We're approaching it by way of its two five. This is what makes the Berkeley arrows and brackets so incredibly useful. You can clearly see that this is a two five one. Granted, it's a secondary two five one because the target is not the one of the key. This is why we write two of four, five of four, and then four. The two of four and the five of four are called secondary functions because they target a primary function. So every time we see a solid bracket followed by a solid arrow, we know it's representing a two, five, one, secondary or primary. Look how many there are in Misty. That's why every time you hear someone talking about jazz, they mention the two, five, one. An important aspect of the 251 is that harmony follows the expected path of resolution towards a target. The two prepares the target by positioning the listener in the subdominant of that target, which then goes to the five in the dominant region, which in turn desperately wants to resolve to the target. Also, the 251 creates the strongest bass movement of two consecutive perfect fifths. So if I cover these two functions and I show you that the target is the two chord, what are these two functions? Based on the bracket and arrow, you can now tell that we have a two of two, five of two progression in this measure, even without seeing any actual chords or functional analysis. So in the case of E flat, the two is F minor seven. This would make our progression G minor seven to C seven to F minor seven. Let's do another blind analysis. What do you think is happening here? Our target is the one, E flat. So according to the arrow in the bracket, we should have F minor seven, B flat seven to E flat, a primary two, five, one, easy peasy. Let's go back and fill in all of the two five ones that we can find according to our bracket and arrow method. Keep in mind that this method of contextual deduction only applies with a two five one, not a two five like we'll see in measure four later. In other words, we need both the bracket and the arrow to have a two five one. A single bracket is just a two five without a clear target thus making it impossible for us to work our way backwards. You've heard us time and again talk about how important it is to consider the target 
when dealing with harmony, and today's video is no exception. Always consider your target and work backwards from there. Okay, so I see this arrow targeting this four chord. In our key, that's A flat. When I work backwards from A flat, considering A flat's two five, we get B flat minor seven to E flat seven to A flat major seven. The next one here is targeting the two, F minor seven. Our two five of F minor seven is G minor seven to C seven. Here we have another two five of four like we had earlier. So that's just gonna be B flat minor seven to E flat seven to A flat major seven again. Down here, another two five of two. So G minor seven to C seven to F minor seven here as well. The cool thing about this one though, is how it leads us directly into another two five one. Our target here, the two chord, becomes the first chord of another two five one in the following measures. Hence, another set of brackets and arrows. These measures would then be F minor seven to B flat seven to E flat major seven, a primary two five one. These two five ones are so essential, so crucial when it comes to understanding and playing jazz. I can't stress enough how important it is to see them and to recognize them quickly. The methods found in this book have completely changed the way that I look at harmony, songwriting, how I play, and just music in general. On the next video, I'll show you the meaning of other symbols found within the book, backdoor two fives, and the one six two five progression. We'll then take these techniques and apply them to an awesome reharmonization of There Will Never Be Another You. And all of this without any chord symbols, just harmony. Mm -hmm.